Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of Unlearn series. I am Omkar from Beehive, and I'm here to source and share the best practices from the world of learning and development for all of you. Today is a very special episode. We have with us a dear colleague and a rock star in the world of corporate innovation, Mr. David Wittenberg. David is a professor of entrepreneurial innovation at ISME, Indian School of Management and Entrepreneurship and ISDI, Indian School of Design and Innovation at Atlas Kiltech University. He has been consistently delivering corporate training programs and consulting projects in design thinking, innovation, strategy, and advanced thinking skills for corporations. Moreover, he has coached entrepreneurs towards building superior products, professors to teach more effectively, and design cutting-edge curricula for next generation's India's leader. In fact, in the pursuit of shaping the future of India, he has recently published another book, 12 Secrets to Reach Your Goals in Work and Life, specifically targeted to young Indians to become future leaders. You can also order it at www.yourpathtosuccess.in. You know, I believe that David is a true believer in India story and an expert in how to make Indian corporations more innovative. David, I'm so glad to have you on the episode with us. No, it's an honor and a pleasure to be with you, Omkar. Thank you. You know, I want to start right things off the bat, right? Today, we are discussing a very important topic, the innovation capabilities of employees and the access to tacit knowledge. I was just reading a report recently of McKinsey where 22% of corporations lack innovative employees within the organization. And if you flip that around, it is interesting to see in the same report, 80% of employees across Fortune 500 companies claim that the culture of the company is in fact the one which inhibits their innovative thoughts. So, you know, David, I'm coming straight to the point over here. What do you think is the relationship between access to tacit knowledge and the innovative capabilities of employees? Sure. Well, you've mentioned a couple of points that are, are they ring really uh, true with me based on what I've observed working with leading Indian corporations. And it's a challenge uh, because innovation is one of those things that a business absolutely needs to defeat the competition, to keep and expand its market share. So to answer your question about the relationship with um, tacit knowledge, I would say that tacit knowledge is one of those corporate assets that can accelerate and empower and magnify and amplify innovation. We teach innovation as a five-step process. We also use the word design thinking, but I'll share with you three times in that process, three points where tacit knowledge can really amp up the practice of innovation. The first is if you know your target group, if you have selected your target group, it's usually your existing customers and you've selected that group to innovate for them. Your uh, organization has an awful lot of tacit knowledge based on the history of serving the customers. So if the innovation team can access that from around the organization, that's a huge advantage. Secondly, at, the, at what we call step three, ID8, when it's time to brainstorm for solutions, the more the merrier. The more the merrier. Not all the, not all the great ideas come from the boss no matter what your corporate culture tells you. That's a, unfortunately, that's too, too common of a thing. Um, uh, innovative ideas can come from anywhere. And so when you've got a, a knowledge gathering, knowledge transferring network in your company, you may be able to, to plumb and mine that network for amazing new ideas. And then finally, um, we have good dreamers who come up with wild and crazy and huge ideas for innovation. And where tacit knowledge helps there is those dreamers may not be subject matter experts. They may be dreaming. <laughs> and so it's important to involve people who really know the science, really know the law to say, yeah, that's feasible. Or no, I don't think we should spend too much time on that because that technology doesn't exist. No, I, I agree with you, right? Because um, a lot of times executioners are the ones who, who, have, who have a very siloed approach. And uh, the more you have, uh, you, the more you have blinders on, on your eyes, I think the appetite for innovation reduces and so does the output. You know, and over here, this actually drives a very good segue to my next question, which is that 
you know, are employees really born with that creative being innovative or is that the culture of an organization which can drive innovative capabilities? Uh, do you believe in recruiting talent which is already like super innovative by, by its attributes or do you want to start investing in a culture of your organization which can start, you know, making the non-innovative, if I would say, employees into innovative employees? Well, this is one of those questions where the answer is not either or, it's both and. Mm -hmm. As far as born creative, um, I've got good news for all your listeners. Mm -hmm. Every single member of this species that is known as Homo sapiens sapiens, and yes, there are two sapiens, that means mankind. Mm -hmm. Every one of us is born innovative. The human brain is hardwired to find innovative solutions to challenges and problems. So we all start innovative. But as you have clearly observed for yourself, Omkar, there are organizations that do more to bring out that ability, to yeah. foster that ability. And so uh, everyone's innovative. Now, I have to say this. Not everybody is innovative in the same way. And not everybody is innovative to the same degree. So yes, you can recruit people who have a history of being more innovative. But the fact is we're all innovative and the corporate culture has a lot to do with how we, how we uh, uh, um, capitalize on that, how we develop that. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the culture becomes like the sharpening side of, of the edge of, of innovativeness of everybody. You know, this, this actually helps me uh, want to understand from you that you know if you want to pick up an organization which actually promotes this this tacit knowledge sharing and in that pursuit as employees develop their potential of being innovative what do you believe are other traits of such organizations that if you would if you would like to put it on a on a wall and say that hey you know what the traits of a great innovative organization are these 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 Mm -hmm. Well, this is something I teach to corporate leaders about how to make their uh, how to make their organizations more innovative. And one of my biggest projects was with Reliance Industries, mm -hmm. working with uh, their innovation council, uh, reported directly into Mukesh Ambani. So let me share with you uh, what I teach in my workshops and what I shared with companies like Reliance. Mm -hmm. The three marks of an innovative organization may surprise you, but I'll share them with you. The first one is a shared definition of innovation. Mm -hmm. In yeah. organizations that don't do a good job of promoting innovation, you get these arguments. Well, my solution was innovative. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yeah, no, you know, because there's no agreement about what the definition is. Employees have to know what they're working toward. Managers have to know what they're trying to get their employees to produce. So it starts with a common vision and definition of innovation. The second point is, it can't, companies that are truly innovative have a structure in place to both, um, to both uh, manage innovation and facilitate innovation. And I know you specialize in, in knowledge transfer and knowledge uh, storage and, and, and knowledge sharing. This is where a, you know, that kind of a practice comes in. If you've got a good structure, such as a, an online knowledge transfer system, then your organization has one of the tools to show that it is innovative. So if you have an innovation department or an innovation lab or an innovation council, those are the kinds of structures. There isn't one size fits all, but all innovation or, you know, uh, all in a go, a good innovation or, or organizations have some kind of a formal structure uh, uh, to some extent. And of course, the third one is, well, they put their money where their mouth is. You can actually see that they invest in innovation. You talked about recruiting. We talk about uh, policies. We talk about um, you know where where rewards for innovation. We talk about investments of time of manpower and money into innovative work. So just to recapitulate those three, they have a shared definition. They have a structure for innovation, mm -hmm. and oh, I'm sorry, you know, and and yeah, let's go with that. And they they demonstrate their commitment by making investments. Yeah, perfect. Lovely, you know, I, I really like this, um, you know, these three ideas of, of to identify or, or have traits of 
innovative organizations. And I just want to drive in a, a step below where we're talking about a high level trade of all organizations. Now, if I take HR managers and HR leaders, because these are the people on whose shoulders a lot of innovation shots would be fired from, right? So if I get a bunch of HR guys within, uh, within the room, and if you have to give practical advice to them in order to start having an innovative culture within the organization, what would your three practical advices be? Well, um, I'm not sure I 100% agree with you. I mean, I understand where you're going and I wanna support one aspect of what you said. HR can have a very significant role in innovation, but I think it would be a mistake to leave the whole thing to HR. Um, just as with you know, my friend, Ron Kaufman, who's the customer service guru, he'll tell you that it's gotta be supported from the very top of the organization for customer service excellence. And I'll tell you the same thing for innovation. So if you don't have the support of the top of the corporation, typically the CMD, the board of directors, then you may fall short of your goals. Now have, and also it, 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 hopefully it's people in new product development, it's people in marketing, it's people in sales. These are the people who should be agitating and lobbying and begging for innovation and doing innovation. So that's that's because that they're the ones who are going to reap the benefits of innovation. Now, having said that, let's go back to your question, which is the HR people. They can also play a vital role. As I said, um, companies that that innovate well have have programs and processes in place, mm -hmm. and that includes reward systems. That's in the domain of HR. What are the key performance indicators and key performance areas going to be? HR can do a lot to make sure that those get incorporated in job descriptions and that they get monitored. Mm -hmm. Secondly, how do we get the message across to our people? This is an innovative company. We want you to invent. We want you to imagine. We want you to take risks. You know, we want you to bring your ideas here. HR can be an extremely strong facilitator in that area. And then finally, if uh, well, two more. If the third main one is that HR obviously plays a big role in recruiting. HR should be on the lookout for the kind of people who are gonna drive innovation. So those are my three main bits of advice, but you'd be interested to know, I also do a lot of corporate work with HR people. And again, I hope this doesn't surprise you, but they're asking me, David, how can we in HR become more innovative in the way we do our work? Our work yeah. And I say, that's brilliant. And I work with them to become in more innovative HR people. This is this is perfect, you know. I think um, the HR folks, I think gone are the times where HRs are just looked as people who are just pushing around papers and getting certain approvals. I'm a son of a CHR for the last, and I've been observing him for the last 30 years. And the nature of work has changed so much that innovation is is not a is more of a demand of his job now. That if he's not innovative enough, I think um, you know he's going to have a very difficult time making sure that the company grows with him. So perfect, David. This was this is very crisp. This is very helpful to all our listeners, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of knowledge has been shared within this small little podcast what we had. So I am very grateful to you for taking out the time, and thank you so much. My pleasure, Omkar, anytime.